Good afternoon all, it's post bag, but today's piece of post is so big it won't fit on my cutting mat, so I'm going to have to put it somewhere else. So this is it, it's a pretty big box, uh, it's fragile, and it's from Inventables, and the description is a build-it-yourself kit. So I'm going to open this up and then take bits out uh, one by one, be careful not to cut into... Uh, what's in the top of this box and then I'm going to stack it all on this table here which I've uh, cleared specially for this and then as each item comes out I'll put it on my cutting mat and uh, well have a little chat about it. So these are all parts for a machine um, that Inventables manufactures and it's called the X-Carve and it's uh, here's a list of all the bits in there and it's uh, well effectively uh, what I would call a CNC router but uh, I know that uh, Americans call these things routers uh, I'd call this a router so what's a what's a, a router called so here's the X carve on inventables website now there are two models there's uh, this one with 500 millimeter rails and a cutting air of I think 300 by 300 this one with one meter rails, the cutting area is 800 millimeters square. Um, so here's some pictures of the uh, Z motor assembly, the carving motor, which is a, a DC motor, and the software, things you can carve, and so on, lots of videos, and how to configure, and technical specs, and all the rest of it. So that's probably why they call it a, a carving machine. Now these two boxes look like the most interesting bits. We've got the NEMA 17 stepper motors in this box. Oops, that's quite heavy. And uh, in here we've got the motion controller. So let's have a look at those two first. So we have four of these uh, NEMA 17 stepper motors. Uh, let's see if I can uh, open that package. Now here are two of the NEMA 17 stepper motors, they're four wire motors which I think means they're bipolar and you can just about see down in there um, the coil uh, windings and uh, using a magnifying glass there's a little peek at the coil windings, they look fairly substantial and then as well as the four motors we've got four uh, toothed pulleys here and we got screws and washers. Now next we have the motion controller and in here lots of bits, uh, a 24 volt fan, more packages. Ah, now here's the intelligence, what drives the thing. It's a standard Arduino Uno, Arduino Uno, and then there is a shield that fits onto the UNO, which will be in one of these bags. Let's take a look. Hmm, that's useful. Uh, G-Shield's number one rule, attach the power correctly. Neg goes to ground, pause goes to 12 to 30 volts. So this is the uh, G-Shield. Now it has three of the stepper motor driver chips and of course the standard Arduino uh, header pins for stacking it on top of the UNO. Let's take a look at those chips. And they are Texas Instruments DRV8818 chips. And this is a, a stepper motor controller I see for bipolar motors. It has pulse width modulation micro stepping and uh, it has N channel power MOSFETs configured as a full H bridge to drive the motor windings. Now there is a giant box here of core components, uh, two end plates for the gantry, um, there's the extruded piece which I think uh, moves left and right, and some rails here, lots of metal bits. And uh, here are the 500mm rails, quite long, and I think that looks like the uh, toothed belts underneath there. Okay this is a spindle and in here we have the main DC spinner motor. Let's unwrap that. So this is a fairly chunky DC uh, motor. Now it's brushed I notice so the question is how long will those brushes last. Um, but it's pre-fitted 
with the collet uh, for the uh, tools to fit in there. That looks like um, yeah, it's a one eighth collet. It actually says one eighth on the collet. Okay. Right, here's a clamp set. This is obviously for holding work down onto the baseboard um, while it's being carved. There's a wiring set here, lots of this multi-core wire plus some twin core wire and uh, terminal blocks and so on. There's some uh, more twin core wire here. What's this? A black and white hookup wire set. Now this is interesting. This is the end mill starter set. So this is a set of uh, carving tools and there are various types here. There's a single flute uh, upward spiral carving tool there. There's a flat end uh, two flute, I think, straight sided. This is another two flute, I think, but spiral. And some very tiny ones. Not sure how long that one's going to last. There's a half a meter of drag chain here for uh, putting the wires through so that they're kept neat. And this is the uh, Z-axis lead screw and it says Acme. I thought Acme was just a name they had in cartoons, but uh, maybe not. Now they had an option of just a standard M8 threaded rod or this Acme lead screw and it does look very beautifully cut. So I'm quite glad I went for the uh, Acme lead screw. And here's something which is called a Delrin nut which presumably sits on the lead screw and uh, moves up and down as it turns. And then in power supply, we have uh, a standard off the shelf switching power supply. But they've also got this um, circuit board, which kind of bolts onto the, uh, the screws on the power supply and gives it a sort of friendly front end with the mains input and the DC outputs. And I'm not sure what that switch does just yet. And uh, this is manually switched, 115, 230. So I'm gonna punch through this plastic and I'm gonna switch that over to 230 right away because I don't wanna forget that at the last minute and blow everything up. And uh, this is rather a nice touch. Oh, there's an Inventables tool bag here with some uh, spanners in there and uh, bits and pieces in here. Hex keys and oh yes, very important goggles. Wouldn't want to run one of these machines without wearing goggles, quite frankly. And then in the bottom of the box is the 500 millimeter square baseboard. I think it's half a meter square, um, which can get carved into. They call this a sacrificial bed because it can get carved up if you're cutting full depth into your work, or you can put a spacer block in. Uh, if you don't want to destroy this, and it does seem a shame to destroy this when it's got all this printed um, grid on it. And then there's a bag here of these threaded inserts which go into these holes and that enables you to use the clamps to clamp down the work. So that's everything stacked on my table. Uh, it does completely fill the table and more. Now I should disclose at this point that Inventable sent me this carving machine at no cost. Um, it did cost me about £160 in import VAT. The UK does have rather punitive import tax uh, rules. But I do think this is going to be uh, great fun to build. Now there are instructions here. Let's have a look at those. Let's get started. So I'm going to have to read all this. And a lot of it is done uh, with videos. So you watch the video and then follow the instructions. Now I should perhaps just say a few words about why I thought this unit was relevant to this channel. And I suppose it's two reasons really. If I open this drawer, we've got these uh, PWM5 charge controllers. And I thought that um, one of the things this machine could do is carve printed circuit boards. Now I've made printed circuit boards using the old etching methods in the past, but I've never tried routing them or carving them so it'd be quite interesting to make a carved PCB for this thing. And then of course the other thing is that this was packaged in heat shrink. It would probably be interesting to see if I could carve a little enclosure uh, that this thing could uh, go inside. But that's it for this post bag. Uh, that's the Inventables X carve machine waiting to be built. And that'll be uh, done in another video. But for the moment, cheerio.